Okay. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Welcome in. Hey, everybody. Yeah, find your seats, get seated, get comfortable. Uh, we'll start in just a uh, just a couple minutes here while everybody is piling in. Yes. Uh, let us know where you're from in the chat. Uh, I always say this, and it's always true. Love to see the global community that is Zeppelin. Uh, we always get people from all over the world. So, yeah, in the chat, let us know where you're from. Always cool to see. Okay, yeah, Pittsburgh, one, Berlin. Yeah, one Vermont. weird thing about the chat is that um, I think you need to click the drop down and select everyone so that everyone can see your message. Yes, that's right. And Zoom, Zoom stuff. Make sure to click those three dots so you can select everyone. Oh, San Diego. Well done, Jen. <laughs> Berlin too, Brazil. See, this is what I'm talking about. People from Europe, North America, South America, India. Whoa, it must be really late in India. That's unbelievable. Nigeria, whoa. Wow, fantastic. Okay, Adam from Kansas. Hello, hello. Wow, lots of people from India, crazy. You guys are troopers. Okay, so just some Zoom logistics. Uh, if you have questions during the uh, webinar, make sure to put it in the Q&A and not in the chat that you guys are currently in. Uh, you put it in the Q&A because uh, we actually have two people in there. We have Josh and June. They're a part of the community team and they will be the ones uh, that will answer any and all questions that you might have. So, uh, Yes, definitely make sure to put your questions in the Q&A. Uh, we'll also have, uh, Josh, maybe if you could add the Discord in the chat. Uh, the Discord is where um, usually me, Josh, June, and every now and then Burke uh, will be. And it's a way to not only uh, learn from us about uh, the workflows in Zeppelin, but also for you to learn from your peers and for you to teach your peers about how you're using Zeppelin too. So uh, make sure to, to join our Discord too. Yeah, or feel free to just post cat GIFs. <laughs> Those are always welcome. It's really the majority of the messages that we see in the Discord. So uh, you'll be in good company. Okay, great. So uh, let's get started. We can let the rest of the people trickle in as time goes on. Um, hello, welcome again. My name is uh, Mike Pitt. I'm a part of the community team here at Zeppelin. And basically what I do is uh, I find stories about our users and how they're using Zeppelin. Uh, usually pro users are just people that are using Zeppelin in interesting ways. And then I'll share those stories with the rest of our community. Uh, so what I'm doing is uh, providing this peer-to-peer -peer learning uh, experience. And uh, just as a plug, if you have any interesting stories, uh, you can chat me in the Discord. And maybe instead of me and Burke, it'll be me and you up <laughs> yeah. here next time. Yeah. And hey, already, I'm I'm back. I'm one of the one of the co-founders of Zeppelin. As you guess, I've been doing a bunch of different things since the beginning of Zeppelin. And most recently, I'm uh, I'm leading the product crew here. Uh, so I'm working closely with our users, uh, working on our roadmap uh, and all sorts of things like that. And I'm joining you all from our uh, Istanbul office mm -hmm. today, actually. That's why it's a little dark in here. <laughs> yeah, it's late over there. Um, cool. Yeah, so for today, uh, we want to share with you uh, how Zeppelin is using Zeppelin to build Zeppelin. Uh, and some of the top tips that we've learned while doing that. Not only that, uh, the top tips that we've learned from our users too, right, Bert? Yes, that's actually um, most of our roadmaps since the beginning have been um, just stuff that we heard from you all. Um, and but there are also some things in there that... As we were building Zeppelin, some of the pain points that we uh, ran into, we also tried to come up with some solutions. So some of the stuff we talk about today are just like top requests from uh, everyone using Zeppelin. And some of them are just things that internally we found really helpful. So we wanted to come up with some solutions. 
Yeah. Okay, so uh, today we're going to overview uh, pop out and how you can use it not only for development QA, but also for design QA. Uh, we're going to talk about optimizing your assets. Uh, we're also going to talk about exporting those assets automatically into Xcode. Uh, and then we'll talk about spacing. And if we have time, we'll do Jira too. But potentially that might be uh, a conversation for Discord after the webinar. Um, we will be there in the Discord for the next half hour, hour or so. So if you don't have any questions that get answered here, uh, make sure to, to go over there and, and I'll be there to, to help you guys out. And then, uh, Burke, I think we might uh, we might have a little bit of a sneak peek. Is that right? Oh, that is true. Yeah, we're actually going to sh to show uh, one of the features in action. We're actually going to work with one of our existing projects in Zeppelin, uh, which is for an upcoming feature. So I'm like really excited to show that off too. Mm -hmm. A little sneak peek. <laughs> okay, cool. So let's get started with pop out. Um, basically, in the past it was uh, difficult for developers to know if what they uh, developed was actually what was uh, designed and vice versa. So uh, oftentimes what you would see is um, people using this kind of weird workflow to uh, take screenshots and mm -hmm. compare it. And yeah, Burke, what, what did that look like? Yeah, that's that's something I've done in the past a lot. Uh, also, I've heard from a lot of our users. You basically, um, you you either take the design, open it up in preview or something, put it right next to the actual running app. This could be in your browser or simulator. And then you, you're just like basically squinting and making sure that everything matches. Um, and that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not a great solution. Yeah, I think if you have 2020 vision, uh or maybe just like some super x-ray vision, then you can tell the differences between these screens. But oftentimes you'll miss stuff and it's not a good structured uh, way to work, right? And so we knew that was a problem and um, yeah, we wanted, to, we wanted to solve it. So uh, basically what you can do is when you're uh, inspecting an individual screen in Zeppelin, we have this little uh, icon at the bottom left, and you can pop uh, this design out. And you can actually move it around. You could overlay it on emulators, simulators, um, even a, a local host. Um, but yeah, uh, then you can you can actually overlay it onto uh, onto your emulator and see if if what was uh, developed is actually what was designed. And yeah, as we know this right there, it, 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 it does not match. <laughs> yeah, so there are some, uh, there are some differences yeah. uh, here. Wait, this, this is a perfect use case for a uh, pop-out because a common thing that, um, that even if you use the perfect specs from your, uh, from your design file or, your, uh, or in Zeppelin, uh, especially when you're dealing with text layers, the, the way that uh, the bounding box of a text layer the way Figma does that is going to be different than uh, iOS or than Sketch. So there's always these sort of small differences between, especially between text layers. Uh, so whenever you uh, use Popout, you can just directly put it on top of it. So uh, you can do like small adjustments, maybe one or two pixels uh, to make sure that uh, you know it matches perfectly. And that's mainly due to uh, different tools having different bounding boxes for text layers, even though you're using the same font and the same font size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like this age old problem that has always existed for- Yeah, I mean, in this example, we definitely need more than one or two pixels. It's, it's way <laughs> off, but still. <laughs> yeah, so uh, one thing I wanna show too is uh, when you pop this design out from Zeppelin, you can actually directly snap it uh, onto the simulator. So if I click this phone icon, Boom, there we go. I can snap it onto, onto my simulator. Yeah, and I this can was also like one of those the... things. Yeah, one of those things that we realized after we built this feature that, oh, whenever you pop something out, you have to actually move it on top of the simulator. Uh, so we add a little button that does that automatically. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's also a, a shortcut that maybe you can also show Mike that mm -hmm. just immediately 
pops it out and then puts it on top of the simulator. <laughs> yeah, so if you command O uh, in Zeppelin, it'll just pop uh, it out. And then if you command option O, it'll pop it out directly on the simulator. So save yeah. you a couple steps there too. This also, by the way, works with Android simulators. Uh, for browsers, it's a little more tricky. So that's not something we have right now. But um, if you have any feedback, um, yeah, just let us know. Yeah. And I think something that is interesting is that, uh, you know, we initially built this feature for uh, developers and developers were saying that they needed it. But actually, we found that designers are using this feature at the same time as well. Yeah, that's, uh, we've heard a lot of feedback about this feature from designers and um, that I think that that's mainly because, um, I mean, all developers are, you know, they sadly don't, not everyone uses pop out. So whenever you send off a test build or something to a designer, uh, they, they kind of sense that there's something off. So they use pop out to make sure that, you know, um, they, they, those things get fixed. Hmm. Cool. So that's pop out uh, a way to uh, QA your um, your production um, applications, or maybe you know it's a beta or alpha build. Uh, but actually, designers will use it too to compare uh, what was actually built matches what they what they designed. Right. Cool. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is assets. And specifically, getting the assets uh, from the design into Xcode. And historically, this has kind of been a tough workflow. Uh, so uh, say you're in a design tool, you, what you would do is you would uh, select um, an icon, and basically then you would, you would uh, export it and download it. From there, you would have to go into your finder, and you'd have to search through all these files, like this giant like dolge of files, and you take it and drag it into, into Xcode. Um, and that that wasn't the really the best workflow. Yeah. This was this was one of the things that we, as we were building Zeppelin's uh, Mac app, uh, something that we ran into. Uh, in this UI, this is where you define uh, all the different icons and you know all the other images that you have in your project. You have to go in here, add uh, add a new image, make sure to drag everything in the right place. Also, there are some settings that sometimes you need to uh, set up on the right hand side. So um, basically, we were thinking, can we just sort of take care of all of this stuff in one click? And that's where this this idea came from. Yeah. And so for uh, for the designers in the room, don't get uh, too overwhelmed here. This is just Xcode. I know the UI can be confusing, especially if you haven't seen it before. <laughs> but uh, this is where your developers go if they're creating an iOS or a Mac app. Uh, you know, you don't see them for a bit. They're sitting in this IDE and they're coding away um, the the applications. So uh, let's see what it looks like when you export, uh, say, this Chevron icon here. So I just uh, click this download button and boom, uh, there we go. Right here, I can see my project from Xcode and it's actually the XC assets file uh, too. Yeah, this was also like one of the, I mean, apart from just setting up all the stuff in Xcode, just knowing where to put your uh, images was also a big deal. Usually in a design tool, whenever you're downloading images, it just gives you any old random folder in your finder. So it's up to you to like dig in and find the right thing. So another thing that we do is just be remember where your projects are and you can have one or you can have multiple. Um, it's just uh, makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. So if you have multiple projects and they just show up here in a list, but boom, there we go. Export. And if we go back to Xcode, we can see uh, that not only are all these uh, densities immediately popping up, but they're all dragged into the right place. And on the right-hand side, you can see that the scale is an individual scale here too. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe do you want to sh also show how a vector image would look like? 
Um, potentially, you could actually export the same icon again, but as a vector uh, image, in this case, a PDF. It's pretty common for assets to get updated over time. And then you have to make sure that you replace it perfectly with the right names and everything. So in this case, uh, let's say if we wanted to export this as a PDF instead, um, you can just do the same exact thing. And then um, the image in Xcode will get replaced automatically. Yeah, so there we go. And then on the right-hand side too, you can see that the scale has changed to a single scale. And we've actually replaced all those three icons with one automatically. Yeah. Not too bad. So yeah, um, that's automatically exporting uh, assets into Xcode. Basically this workflow where you'd have to download them, drag them, update them, remember where the project is, find the file. Um, I was telling Burke uh, earlier that it feels like when you're looking for these uh, icons and your files as a dev on your computer, it's like you're you're panning for gold. You know, you have all this like soil and water and you like are using the sifter and it takes forever and you find this little tiny nugget in there, that needle in the haystack. That's what it was like to find that uh, that asset that you downloaded, but no more, just a couple clicks and your asset is automatically moved into Xcode. Yeah, that was the perfect metaphor. <laughs> yeah, I've been working on it for a while. I still am not sure if I have it or not, but <clears throat> great. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's uh, automatically moving your assets into Xcode. Uh, I think next, let's look at optimizing your assets. And this is something that uh, not only uh, devs will do, but actually, Burke, you were saying that even uh, other people on the team, like uh, PMs, might sometimes optimize assets. Yeah, for... it's, I guess it's it's mainly like, uh, in, in most cases, it would be the developer. But I've, I've seen designers where um, they, after they export the images from the design tool, um, they do the optimization for their developers just to make their lives a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a common practice that you, you uh, should optimize your images because the design tools are really meant to export things at, you know, uh, the perfect uh, 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 sort of visual, visually in a perfect way. Mm -hmm. uh, but with just some slight optimizations, either lossy or lossless, um, you, you will just get a lot. Yeah, it will be just much better uh, in terms of performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so usually what people do is uh, they'll download uh, this asset from a design tool, uh, all the different densities, all the different formats, and then they'll actually move it into a third-party system uh, and then optimize it. Then they'll download it from there and then finally, they'll move it into their IDE, like Xcode, like we saw before. What's, what's pretty funny about this is that whenever we were thinking of building this feature, um, I, uh, we, we talked to a bunch of developers, both internally, uh, folks at Zeppelin, and also uh, folks, uh, developers that use Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. uh, and a common uh, theme was most developers were aware that this is something that they should be doing, mm -hmm. but since it takes a bunch of uh, time, it's just manual uh, where you have to like drag everything into a separate tool and then move it into your IDE. They were, some of them were like, I just don't want to deal with it. I don't want to spend time doing this stuff. And you kind of obviously end up with these really large images. So again, similar to exporting assets into Xcode, we were thinking, can we just simplify this uh, and Zeppelin takes care of it for you? you don't, so you don't even have to think about it. Uh, and all the assets that you download from Zeppelin are automatically optimized. Yeah, it's funny. We were talking to people and uh, we we're like, hey, do you optimize your assets? And they're like, no, it takes too long. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what I want to show is um, I just want to show these uh, these two images here that we've downloaded. One is optimized and one isn't. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have uh, the optimized image and it's this incredibly delicious baklava. Um, it's actually, I actually am a little hungry looking at this. <laughs> uh, and on the right-hand side, uh, we have the unoptimized uh, image. And the thing I just want to note here is that the unoptimized image is 282 kilobytes. 
The optimized one is 930. So it's over three times larger, the unoptimized uh, here. Yeah, this, this really depends on the type of optimization you use, obviously. Uh, but yeah, we what, what we basically did when we were building this feature is we were thinking of, uh, you know, whenever you use tools like um, uh, Image Min or SVGO to optimize images, there are a bunch of settings that you can set up. Um, but obviously, we didn't want to make this too complicated. So we did a bunch of research and sort of tried to come up with the, the best practices. So whenever um, the, the, all the images are optimized based on what is accepted to be the best practice, obviously, it's not going to work for everybody. But if you should cover most use cases, currently, um, uh, if you do want to customize the uh, optimization methods that we use, it's sadly not possible uh, because that's something we just wanted to get some feedback on. So let us know if that's something you're interested in. But if you just want to do your own optimizations, you can just disable it through the menu, get the original image that you get from the design file, and then you can sort of apply your own optimizations. So yeah, uh, that's, that's optimization there. Um, so it saves you a little time between these steps of downloading, optimizing, dragging. Uh, but not only that, it's going to improve the performance of your application. So say it's a web page, uh, your loading speeds are going to be quicker. Or if it's, say, an app, uh, then the app size is going to be smaller because it has less of these large images, and it'll download quicker for your users. And everybody knows, like, whenever you're on your iPhone, it's like you never have, it seems like no matter what iPhone you buy, you never have space on that iPhone. Uh, you could buy the the best version, and you just don't have space on that iPhone. So. Hopefully this can this can help you too as a user. Okay. Cool. So that's uh, optimizing assets. The next piece that we want to talk about is uh, spacing and uh, spacing tokens. So uh, the problem here is that when you're a developer and when you're inspecting a screen, it's difficult to know when you're seeing these distances, what is and what isn't a spacing token. Um, and usually you just wanna go and um, if it is a token, you go ahead and grab that in your project and use it. But oftentimes that, that information isn't, isn't visible uh, to you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something that uh, it's, it's pretty tricky. Uh... To build that into a design tool, uh, because you know design tools are meant to be more flexible. But since when you publish things into Zeppelin, uh, they're just finalized. So we were thinking, is there is there a way for for us to enable designers to show the intended design token? Uh, so that's basically what we did. Um, so under your style guide, uh, uh, you can sort of define these different tokens. Yeah. So under this uh, spacing and layout, we can actually add tokens and it'll automatically uh, name it for me, give it a value and also a color, but I can change all those. And then as I add tokens, it'll uh, do the same thing, have a value that is a multiple of um, that value that we use right yeah, now. Yeah, we're going to see those colors in action in a bit, which they're, they're pretty helpful to like immediately identify which token you're looking at. Mm-hmm. So um, maybe this would be a good time for the for the sneak peek. Oh yeah, this is because yeah, that's a that's the perfect feature to um, to showcase spacing. Okay, let's check it out. So as you're pulling that up, uh, the feature that we're going to talk about is uh, we're calling it nested sections, and sections in Zeppelin have been around for a while. Uh, it's just a way for you to organize your screens in a, in a project. And currently we're working on um, ways to make it um, a little bit more powerful so you can have multiple levels of sections. Uh, these are all work in progress. So, you know, stuff you're, you see here might change. We just wanted to uh, give you a sneak peek of uh, what you will be able to do in the future. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so this, is, uh, this is actually Zeppelin... Uh, developing Zeppelin in Zeppelin right here. Like yeah, I was the talking UI about might before. get a little bit complicated uh, <laughs> yeah. if you're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
true. I actually didn't even think about that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, yeah, in our nested sections project, um, what you can see is that now when I'm hovering over these elements, I have that spacing token that pops up. And not only does this color overlay appear, but the name of the token appears too, and the size. So instantly as a dev now, I know that uh, this 48 pixels is actually my spacing extra large token. And I go, I can go ahead and just uh, grab and use that instead of hard coding the, the pixel amount. Yeah, it just makes it a lot easier for you to like immediately see, oh, this is this is a token that I should be working with. A good example is like if you actually scroll down a little bit, Mike, and show the spacing in between, um, um, yeah, the one that says, yeah, there you go. Uh, so see, this is actually, you might sort of be uh, confused or you just you might just assume that all the spacings and these different levels of sections should be the same. But in this case, uh, you immediately see that, oh, it's a different color. So I should be using a different token here. Yeah. And uh, the last thing I want to mention about um, spacing is that uh, if you're using uh, REM, then there's actually this option in the style guide to uh, use REM. And you can click that. We go back to our screens and we inspect that same piece. Now you can see that instead of the pixel amount, this is actually giving us uh, the REM amount of 2.25. Yeah, this for, for those who are not familiar with this, it's uh, some web developers prefer to use uh, REM units, which is basically uh, like a multiplier of your base uh, font size. It just makes things easier to reason about. Uh, so we just added that as an option as we were building the spacing feature. Uh, so instead of dealing with pixel values, Zeppelin can do the math for you and uh, you're simply working with these <laughs> REM values. You don't have to sit and like do uh, long division <laughs> while you're trying to figure out uh, your spacing values. Uh, the last thing that I'll mention here, I know we just have uh, one minute left, is that the funny thing about these spacing tokens is that we built them for developers, but actually our design team is using it too. So when our designers are inspecting these screens in Zeppelin, if they don't see a spacing value like this where they think they should see one, then they know instantly that there's something wrong with that screen and they need to go back to their design tool. So we built it for QA for mainly, or not for QA, but for devs so that they could recognize the tokens, but actually our designers are using it for QA uh, in Zeppelin to, to see the differences. Yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty common for for designers to publish uh, their designs to Zeppelin right as they're ready to be finalized, and they do one final review in Zeppelin. And we've noticed that it's really easy to sort of catch these uh, one or two pixel off spacing values in Zeppelin because you can immediately uh, see or not see the the token showing up. So you're like, oh wait, there's something wrong here. Okay, uh, I know we're at time. I know we didn't get to all of your questions. Uh, I think Trenton, Josh is answering yours, but Bree, Alicia, um, if uh, maybe Josh or June, you could just add the Discord one more time in the chat. Uh, we will see you there and I'll be there for a little bit to answer any other questions that you might have. Uh, and we can, we can chat in there. But um, for everybody that joined, uh, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Trenton. Uh, Thank you, Bree. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Yeah, and uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see everybody. We'll see everybody later. All right. Yeah. Hope this was helpful. Okay. Bye. Bye. One more Zeppelin videos. Check these out and subscribe for regular updates.